Hi Tangle friends, my name is Annie Reiser and I'm a Certified Zentangle teacher as well as a Certified Botanical Illustrator. Thanks for joining me today for another of my lunchtime tangle sessions. Today we're going to be working on a tangle from an original tangle from Zentangle that is called Enzeppel. However, my Enzeppel, I will show you how to do just the basic, but then we're going to take it a step up further with this variation that I'm calling um, Fancy Enzeppel. I don't know if there's really a name for it, but I really like it and I think you will too because I know you guys like flowers. Um, this one is done on a Renaissance tile, so let me show you the materials we're going to be using today. We're going to use a Renaissance tile from Zentangle. Any tan paper would work. And you can do this in black and white if that's all you have. It's not a problem. Um, we will shade it the same way. I'm, I'm going to be beginning with my graphite pencil just for my string. I'm going to be using a PN Micron pen from Sakura. And then also a O1 Micron pen from Sakura that is brown. Um, I think that's what it's called. For my shading, I'm going to use um, my graphite pencil, but also a terracotta Prismacolor colored pencil. And in order to blend that Prismacolor pencil, I'm going to be using something called a blender, a colorless blender from Prismacolor. You can get these from many different uh, manufacturers. This one happens to have a double end, one small tip and one brush tip which is always a nice thing and um, we're going to be using that as well as then also our general's white charcoal pencil for highlighting i do need my my tortillons for blending both the graphite and the white charcoal pencil so i i have designated one for each this one is for the white and this is for the the pen, pencil okay let's get started So we're going to begin with our traditional corner dots. As you know, it's kind of my tradition to switch up from week to week, going from an organic tangle or one that's more line oriented to a gridded tangle. And that's this time it's grid is on the docket. So I do want to keep that going because I know many of you out there just really love both. So I, I want to make sure you're getting what you need. So I'm just going to basically uh, divide this into a nice generous grid and I'm just going to do it by hand. I'm not going to use a ruler or a straight edge. I'm just going to eyeball ticks up and down that are about halfway in between the corners. Draw my line. Turn it and do the same here. And then I'm going to divide each of these spaces in half as well. not perfect but that's the Zen Tangle way. All right so now that we've got that we're going to go right on there with our PN pen and we'll start with the beginning steps. So the first step is a very simple actually and we're just going to make an X in this square. We could actually grid out everything in black first. We'll end up doing that while we tangle. Uh, I could have I've done that, but I thought if if you're doing this with your graphite, then you can actually um, correct yourself a little better. Okay, so here is our, our little grid. Here's our first square, and this is the important thing to note. We're going to be, just watch for a second, we're going to be driving along this line and curving in and saving out that, that corner. Drive along the line, curve in, save out the corner. 
same thing. Just keep on doing that same step. Drive along the line, arc in the corner. It's very important not to just go and arc in the corner, but keep driving along the line and then arc in the corner. Same here. And what that does is create that beautiful, thick and thin, lively line because you keep restating certain lines, but others you don't. So you get that beautiful thick and thin happening. So that's just basically in Zeppel. And let's do that again. And Zeppel is very simple, one step at a time, but I've taught this for many years. And I know that some people have a hard time with it, and this is why. This is what they do. Let's, let's do one right here in our little Zentangle Square. What, what you do not want to do is just go in there and make ovals within those triangular spaces. That is not the look we're after. We really want to hug the line, arc in the corner, hug the line, arc in the corner and do that over and over again with each of the triangles. So basically, Maria explained this to us in my certification training. She, she likes to think of this as being a potato being squished into a box. Um, and then I heard Molly, her daughter, explain it in a, another way that it makes a lot of sense too, is that it's like a Nerf ball that you squeeze, put it into a box, and those sides of the Nerf ball expand and they touch all sides of the box. So that's a, a really good way to think of this. And the fact that this is kind of ballooning, just like the, the name indicates. And Zeppel, I guess, um, was named for Zeppelin, the floating sky ships. So the ones that look like big balloons. So we're just going to inflate those Nerf balls or potatoes, whatever you imagine them to be. And don't forget, you can turn your tile if you want. So now I'm going to just go ahead and continue on and let you enjoy watching. That's the basic pattern. Mm -hmm. So now we're ready to get fancy with our end zeppel. Right. Is... What I'd like you to do is look for what we're seeing here are kind of like flowers, sets of flowers. It's a little hard because all of these share sides, but here's one set of one, two, three, like four petals. Then we would have another one over here. This one is shared, right? So we have to skip. So let me show you what I'm, let's just identify the one and we're going to go ahead and start filling that in with our fancy stroke. And I'm going to do it like this. I've got my 01 brown pen from Sakura and I'm just going to make a straight line down the center and then I'm going to fan out almost like um, garlic or um, there are several patterns that are kind of similar. 
and we're just going to fan from that top point out and kind of arc on either side of the line. And again, so that's creating sort of this self-shading because we always go from the same point up here, arc to the right, until you fill up that whole space and arc to the left. Same thing. I remember now, Ravel or Ravel, I'm not sure how they pronounce it. That was the one I did. I think it was my second tutorial. It has a very similar construction. You can go back and look that one up, Ravel. So when in Zentangle we put a couple of different um, tangles together, here we have Anzeppel and then we're putting Ravel or Garlic on top, that is something that we call a tangulation. It's when you kind of are combining two or three. identify the next one. We don't want to go here, right? Here would be a flower, but I'm going to alternate patterns because we're going to do every other with white chalk. Um, so keeping this in mind, we're going to skip this one out for the white and our next one that's a whole four petals, so to speak, is down here. So we're going to continue on and do this on either side and then we'll get to our shading. this, it occurred to me that there's something else I can tell you. Um, I am going, I'm pulling my line down from the center where these are all intersecting and building my garlic or my um, gravel this way. I'm going to turn my tile and again I'm going to build, I'm going to draw that line, that first straight line down the center this and then always joining from that first point at the top and you get that wonderful thick and thin line again that shelf shading There's our fancy and zeppel. Now we're going to get to the fun part, which is really bringing those blossoms alive with some dimension. And I'm going to be using my terracotta um, Prismacolor colored pencil to do that. So I'm going to just add some of that right towards the center. very lightly kind of almost flicking my pencil so that we get a gradation and now this doesn't blend as well with just a tortillon um, it does actually kind of work pretty well on the renaissance paper because it's such a soft piece of paper but generally speaking when i use um, colored pencil over the top of a colored ink pen, I am going to blend it with the colorless blender with that solvent that I showed you. So I'm going to do all of my um, 
shading first and then I'll blend out and then add more if I need to. So one thing I did on the other one is I also added a little bit here to kind of accentuate those petal edges. the magic. We're going to get out our colorless blender and I'm going to use the side that's the smaller tip and one thing that you always need to have nearby is a piece of scratch paper where you can clean your tip before you go on your blending. So I am flicking this. I am not pressing super hard and I am not belaboring the line. By that I mean I'm not going over it and I'm trying as hard as I can actually to avoid the black line right now. Even though this is all permanent ink, if you're not careful and don't wait for that to dry properly, you can pull that up with the solvent. Um, it is permanent and that shouldn't happen, but sometimes we get impatient and or we we hover too long on one spot on the ink. But do you see how that just brightens? Look how much brighter that is than this one. That's pretty good. I might go add a little bit here and there. Now we're ready for the white. So now, oh, well actually, no, first we're going to take our uh, graphite pencil. I'm gonna look for a 3B. Oh, this F will work great because this is on our really soft tile. So what I'm gonna do is pretty much a, a similar thing, and that is if you look at here, we're going to put some graphite along the centers and maybe some down the lines to delineate the petals. So let's start with the centers. This could use a little more dark in the center. Don't be afraid to layer things up. It's always, you always have a lot more control with your shading if you start lighter and then add more if you think you need more. And of course you can go the other way as well and lift with your kneaded eraser if things get too dark. using some of the graphite that's built up on my tortillon to pull down on these edges along here. Uh, it's just enough to give it a subtle separation. I 
And now we're going to get some real, real polished look with some highlights from our General's White Charcoal. And I'm just going to blend this out a little more because we're going to be covering that up with the white. Just want to make sure I have a really smooth transition for all of my shading. Oops, forgot one here. All right, let's get that white. Trying to stay mainly in that area that I saved out my highlight already on the tan. Uh, trying not to go too much into that uh, graphite. It'll just get muddy. Unlike the graphite, I am pressing a little bit harder on this um, than the other color pencil or graphite. Sometimes the generals don't take to the paper, but they certainly take really well to this paper. That's why I like using them on the Renaissance tiles. <laughs> back and blend so don't worry that this looks a little bit sloppy right now. Then I'm going to take my white designated tortillon so that I don't contaminate it with the charcoal or with the um, graphite and I'm just going to go ahead and blend that from the center out so we don't see those little kind of scratchy marks. We're just going to really push this into the tooth of the paper. And you know with these generals the thing is when you handle your tile um, this chalk really is fragile and it will wear off. So sometimes if you carry these around. If you don't spray them with a, a fixative of some kind, you are going to probably have to go back and add some more highlight because it will wear off. But that's what I love about the generals. If you don't like what you just did, if you think that the highlight's too much, it's so easy to just knock down again either with your eraser or just keep blending it into the surface until you get your desired look. Sorry, I'm pulling this towards myself. There we go. Doesn't that look pretty? Very three-dimensional. But we're not done yet. We are going to add some charcoals as well on our, our rust-colored petals. And I'm going to try to stay kind of in that saved out highlight area. See how it just makes it so subtle. I like to finesse things and if we're doing something as simple as this um, to really make it special. And so what I did on this one is I went and I, I did some thick and thin lines both on the petals here and then I went with my darker pen in towards the center with some line weighting. So let's do that starting with the brown. So I like to really get that mid one 
highlighted. And then just restate a couple of the other ones so that it's almost have a striping effect. And it doesn't have to be done in an organized way. Just wherever you think you want to emphasize the line. bottom of the outline of your end zeppel. Um, doesn't look finished otherwise. It looks sloppy. So this is a good chance to clean up some of those lines that you might have missed. Isn't that pretty? And then we can actually make it even more beautiful by getting some more weight down here. really draws your eye to the center point. And I didn't do it on these just because it's kind of nice to have the balance of something a little more plain and then something more intricate. Sometimes even I go in there and put a, maybe like a white jelly roll dot in the center. Let's see, or a dark, uh, you can see it on this example. I went in and did the browns here. Uh, on other, other cases, I do a little white dot in the center. Why don't we go ahead and do that just to see what it looks like. because I have a big blob of a mistake right there with my pen, so I can cover that up. This also helps identify which, which are the flower petals that go together. It gets a little confusing because there are shared sides, right? You could even go in there and do some flicking with your white pen. There's so much you can still do. So this is just um, some inspiration for you to play with this on your own and have some fun with Fancy and Zeppel. Thanks for joining me today. I look forward to next week. Bye-bye now. That's it for today's Tangle. Thanks for joining me. If you like these lunchtime tutorials, please give them a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I also invite you to check out my website for classes that I have scheduled or to purchase my tangle tags for your favorite step outs. That's bowtangle.net. I'm leaving you with some other links too. Zentangle.com, where you can learn more about the Zentangle method from its founders, Rick Roberts and Maria Thomas. You can also visit their store there for a multitude of Zentangle paper tiles, tools, books, and kits. Tanglepatterns.com is that site I talk about where you can explore hundreds of tangle patterns, read about them, and get the step out, which is basically the deconstruction of the pattern. And finally, if you'd like to share your beautiful results with me and my student community, please join Annie's Botangle alumni Facebook page. We're a private group where we inspire each other with our work and offer tips and useful information about art and Zentangle.